So I wrote a book called Passion Driven Education, which is about using a child's interests to uh, build a kind of a custom curriculum about that. So for example, rather than talking to my son about algebra and then biology and then history and then economics, um, these are like foreign languages to children, right? Because when we talk in the language of algebra, they're having to like learn that new language before they can understand algebra. And so the idea behind passion-driven education is rather than talking to them in a foreign language, talk to them in their language. So for example, if my child's language is um, uh, Angry Birds, because he loves Angry Birds or Star Wars, then I'm going to pick things out of that Star Wars or Angry Birds or My Little Pony or whatever universe uh-huh. and help him understand how that works. So, hey, there's a Death Star and you know, these planes are, fl- do you really think that, that the X-wings can bank like that in space? Like, so, so let's understand, you know, physics and gravity and space and astronomy and, you know, light speed. What does that mean? And going to hyperdrive and, and, and he, the children love it because you're helping them make sense of a world they're already curious about. They don't see it as learning physics or they don't see it as learning history. Like, Hey, do you know that the empire uh, uh, the emperor in Star Wars. Do you know there are actual examples in real life about people who are like that? Like, really? You know? Oh yeah, <laughs> people who came to power with all this deception and they pretended to be doing one thing. Like, hey, here's this guy that did this and this guy that did this. Um, so, so you're talking to them in a language that they already are are using themselves. You're helping them understand that world they're curious about, and you're sneaking in all these little hooks into things where suddenly they're learning English and math and history not on its own in a textbook where like, you know, I remember in English in college one time I was reading in an English class and I had to learn the past participle subjunctive of some, like, I don't even remember what that means. I just remember the term past participle subjunctive. And I remember like, how is this useful to me? Right. Whereas, you know, if you're helping your kid write a letter to the editor about the latest Star Wars movie and why it was the worst one of all nine, right? <laughs> They're getting English practice and yes. media and all this kind of stuff without even thinking about it. And then you can correct them and help them and like, hey, well, you might be more persuasive if you say it this way. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's not let's sit down in the textbook and let's, you know, memorize the specific, you know, facts and figures and everything else. It's helping them uh, become more successful in the world that they're already experiencing around themselves and they love it. So we, we kind of teeter totter between those two and have found kind of a good blend for our family that fits. So that blend, is that what, um, education vacation kind of brought about? <laughs> That's exactly right. There. <laughs> so John, John Taylor Gatto was instrumental for me, uh, reading his book. Uh, it's called dumbing us down. Yes. Uh, the history of compulsory education. Um, or the hidden agenda of compulsory education, I think it's called. Um, that book for me, before I got married, was instrumental in saying, I've got a homeschool and here's why. When my wife and I were dating, I had her read it, and that was kind of a hook as well. So John Taylor Gatto has long been an inspiration. And, and so he actually, just before we did that book, he passed away. Um, long time successful educator and yes. reformer. And so we, I wanted to do that book as kind of like a, a homage or a, a tribute to him. A tribute yes. to him. 